Example 7 asked us to find all the solutions to the equation e to the 2x minus 10e to the x plus 21 equals 0. So one of the things that you're going to see is that we can actually hide a quadratic from you in plain sight. And so if I'm looking at an equation and I see e raised to 2 times something and then here I see e to the x, I would become suspicious that I might have a quadratic function. And so one way that it makes it very helpful to solve the problem is to rewrite it in a way that's a little bit more familiar to cut down on the math. So if I suspect this is a quadratic, and the only reason I'm going to use the letter u is just because it's not normally used in functions, and so it's hard to confuse with anything else. It kind of sticks out, so that way you know you're not done when you solve the problem. So I'm going to say, well, I think this might be a quadratic, so I'm going to let u be e to the x. So that means that would be a u right there. And if this is a quadratic, then that better be u squared. So let's square both sides of this equation and see if that's true. So e to the x squared, you multiply the exponents together, and you get e to the 2x. So now I can rewrite this equation using this new letter. So e to the 2x is u squared minus 10u plus 21. And now it's really obvious that I have a quadratic. And this is a much easier equation to factor than, it's in, original, than in its original form. So I can see here that I need to know what two numbers multiply to 21. That will either add or subtract to give me 10. And so 3 times 7 is 21, and 3 plus 7 is 10. So u minus 7 times u minus 3 equals 0. Now I'm going to do a quick factor check. This is u squared. Negative 3 plus negative 7 is negative 10, and negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. Now I'm going to solve each factor. So u is 7, or u is 3. And so this is why I like using the letter u, because we almost never use the letter u. And now that I've got down here, I clearly know I'm not done with the problem, because the problem asked me, what is x? Okay. So now that I've gone as far as I can go with my variable u, I can plug back in what u was standing for the whole time. So u was e to the x. So e to the x equals 7 or e to the x equals 3. And now to solve this for x, I'm going to plug this inside of its inverse. So take the natural log of both sides. So this reduces to x is the natural log of 7 or x is the natural log of 3. And it should feel totally normal that we got two answers because we get two answers out of quadratics all the time. So even though this didn't look like a quadratic, um, it definitely was. And it's perfectly okay if you saw that and you were able to factor using e to the x's. Um, I personally just find this to be just a very easy one extra step, but you can do this anytime you suspect you have a quadratic and usually the tell is that two, right? And all you have to do is test your theory, right? So if the middle term is u, then square it. And if it equals the other term, we know we can write it like this. Example eight says, we'll determine the domain of the function log of x squared minus nine. So log was on our domain restrictions we looked at at the last review. We said we'd be getting to it later. And the rule for logs was you cannot have an, um, a negative number inside of a log and you cannot have a zero inside of a log. But this is an expression. So now what we're saying is that expression, no value of x can make the whole expression zero or make the whole expression negative. So sort of like I did with radicals, I take everything inside the log function and I say, well, it has to be strictly positive. No zeros, no negatives. Then I notice this is a difference of squares, so I can factor this.
And now you're kind of algebraically stuck with this inequality. You have to be really careful um, when you're solving for things. If you tried to pull the 9 over and take the square root of both sides, it really wouldn't turn out well. Um, and I'm going to show you why when we do this technique that's a little bit more accurate to find the answer. Um, so with quadratics and inequalities, you want to factor them if you can, and then there's a little bit better technique to make sure the inequality holds. Because remember, you're multiplying two quantities. And if the sign of the numbers changes, right, of their, the expression changes, it affects the outcome of the numbers. So what I do, right, is I draw a number line. And I first look at, well, which one of these, or which values of x would actually make the entire expression equal to 0? So here, if I have a negative 3, the whole thing becomes 0. And if I have a 3, the whole thing becomes 0. So on my number line, I'm going to plot negative 3 and 3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, do I keep or throw those numbers out? And in this example, I'm going to throw them out because this is not allowed to equal 0. So that means this is not in the domain and this is not in the domain. Now what I want to do is I want to see the behavior, right, when I check values in these three intervals. So if I pick a number over here like negative 4, and I go up here to my original expression, well, negative 4 squared is positive 16, and 16 minus 9 is positive 7. So that's true. That works. So all the values in this section of my number line are going to be positive when you plug it into the expression. And that kind of makes sense because look, they're just getting bigger and bigger negative. And if you square them, they're going to become positive and they're definitely going to be bigger than 9. So everything's going to remain positive. If I pick values in between negative 3 and 3, so 0 is a good choice, and I plug it in here, well 0 minus 9 is negative 9. So that also makes sense, right? Because values in here, right, are smaller than 3, right? And if you square them, they're definitely smaller than 9. So they're going to all come out negative. But on this side, we're kind of in the same boat we were on this side, right? So 4, if you square it, 16. 5 is 25, right? No matter which value you pick on this side of the graph, when you square it, it's bigger than 9. So all these values come out as positive. So the domain of the function, I just simply read the number line from left to right. It's negative infinity to negative in 3, not included, union 3 to positive infinity included. So be careful <clears throat> when you're evaluating a quadratic and you've set up an inequality because you've got to be careful depending on the values it can really have an effect.